Welcome to section 2, Widgets and Masters Wireframing Basics. In the first part of this section, we will set up some page properties and page styles and create some guides for your wireframe. By the end of this section, you will be able to create simple static wireframes. We'll be using some of the native wireframe widgets and we'll also be editing the properties and formatting of these widgets. We'll turn our widgets into masters where appropriate in order to encourage reuse and reduce duplication. Duplication is your enemy and not only can it lead to substantial rework when making updates to our wireframes, it can also have repercussions at build time where developers are following your lead. First up, page notes. This is where you can add reference notes about your page. This can be a handy exercise for clarifying the scope of the page in the project, both for yourself and others, and you can make specific references to requirements documents. Page styles is useful to set up at this point. The dialog allows you to set up some basic page settings, such as background color, and you can set a background image uh, and how it repeats and so on. But it's a good idea to actually set these to the default page style so that it's applied to all of your pages, not just this one. Remember about duplication. Let's check page one, you see it's uh, black as well. It's a good idea to set a font here as well so that you don't have to worry about this aspect unless you wish to deviate from it. Just set the background color back to white. Version 7 also includes web fonts, so you can reference fonts located on the web by using a URL. You can also tweak the sketchiness settings here, which gives a hand-drawn effect that helps to show clients that your early work is well sketchy. This is an important facet of UX design, focusing the user on aspects of the interaction and content onto the page canvas now. First, you will most likely want to work with preset dimensions, so we're going to create some guides which objects will snap to. There is a 960 grid guide preset, as we saw earlier, but for now, we're just going to drag out some global guides by holding control, click, drag, and I think that's command on a Mac. You'll see the global guide is pink. If you drag without control, you get a turquoise color. If you go to another page, you'll see that our global guide is there. You can delete unwanted guides by clicking them and they go green and press delete. So we've got a global guide at 10 pixels. Let's add another one at 610, giving us a 600 pixel wide column. Another at 6.30 and another at 9.50 gives us a 320 pixel right column. These are fairly arbitrary values just to get us going. Now you can lock your guides. This is useful because it's easy to accidentally drag your guides out of place when the canvas gets busy. 